Welcome to Shelley Creek, a small but important tributary to the Englishman River located near Parksville, BC. This video will act as a record in time of the existing stream channel conditions found in Shelley Creek and provide you, the viewer, with some perspective on what this natural asset looks like today. The video will highlight some of the challenges we, the local citizens of this area, must consider if we want this small stream to remain viable in the future as a place for fish, wildlife and people. Video was taken in the third week of March 2019 using GoPro video technology, recording the stream from publicly accessible locations throughout its 5.6 kilometer length, from the headwaters in Arrington to its confluence with the Englishman River at the Orange Bridge. We'll start our video journey in the upper reaches and work our way through the middle and lower reaches, showing the good, the bad and the ugly. Here's a map showing the stream's location. We'll look at these three reaches in detail. Rainwater falling in the Little Mountain and Arrington areas percolates into the vegetation and shallow groundwater, filling what remains of the wooded wetlands like a sponge to slowly release water downstream. Today, much of this entire two kilometer reach has been ditched to accommodate rural land development over the past 40 years. In the middle reach is where the creek enters a gully type environment where the stream gradients average 3 to 5 percent. The surrounding riparian condition is a stable mature second growth forest. However, upon closer inspection of the stream channel we find a very unstable channel. Within this reach the channel is characterized by signs of erosion along the stream banks. Streamside trees with their roots undercut. Accumulations of sand and gravel bed load form behind piles of woody debris that choke the channel in several locations. Much of this channel damage is caused by winter freshet flows, causing the channel to degrade down to the hard pan clay in many areas. For six months of the year, this reach of the stream actually dries up. Within the middle reach, there are six major culverts varying in length from 80 meters to 200 meters. Culverts can have an impact on fish migration, so let's look at two culverts recently installed. ENN cuts through the middle reach of Shelley, and for years its twin culverts provided trout with access to the upper watershed. No problem! Today there are two culverts that have been installed that have compromised trout migration. This six foot diameter culvert was installed ten years ago. However, it wasn't installed in a manner that provided easy access. Fish baffles were great for coho, but small 25 centimeter trout have difficulty with this. Recently this culvert was installed by the local water utility to allow for drinking water, a pipe to run down the ENN right to the right of way to the pump stations in Parksville. Restoration of pool and riffle habitat after construction has been seriously compromised by sediment and gravel deposition from materials washed off the construction site. Unfortunately, there's been no effort to correct this issue to this date. So this middle reach is home to a small population of resident cutthroat trout, kept alive in the summer months by our Artesian spring, which provides base flow, just enough water to keep most pools full. 
but the riffles are dry. In 2014, our local stream stewardship group completed a meter-by-meter -meter stream habitat survey using a method similar to a habitat survey done in 1999. The comparison of our data to the one done 15 years before showed that riparian or streamside vegetation conditions were unchanged, but the stream channel has seen major modifications with increased stream bank erosion, infilling of pools, and channel substrates dominated by sand and mud. In the lower region, our society undertook a channel stabilization project to eliminate a major source of sediment generated from velocities from a road culvert. The sediments were moving downstream to a wetland in the lower reach, causing it to infill. This project was a success. In the lower reaches, Shelley Creek is characterized as a low gradient stream, much of which has been channelized by a farm. However, a very important wetland is located in the lower 500 meters before discharging into the Englishman River. Coho and seagoing trout access this wetland in the winter months when the river is subject to peak flood flows. Juvenile fish access the wetland to escape being swept into the sea. They remain in the quiet water and move downstream in the spring months. Nibby's volunteers, our local stream group, have been monitoring the number of salmon and trout migrating from this wetland to the estuary for the past nine years. We installed fence panels and sampling box before the run begins. The movement of smolts are triggered by spring rains and warming water temperatures. We count fish through the trap every morning and monitor the site 24-7. We attempt to capture 100% of the run, but only sample 10% of the fish counted out of the trap. Last year, we caught 7,000 363 smolts at this track. Although he's actually, I think he's a rainbow. He does have a, he does have an orange line, a very faint orange line going across. Mm -hmm. Rainbow trout. Yeah. You can see the little orange line. Yeah. 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 I think that's a perfect. No, it's a rainbow. It's orange too. Oh, right down the side there. Yeah. I think it's nine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nine. <laughs> this might be a cutthroat. It's got some. Coloring right here. Shelly Creek discharges into the main stem of the Englishman River, about 200 meters above the Orange Bridge. So you can see it is strategically located to provide off channel refuge for salmon and steelhead juveniles during winter flood events. With the estuary only 600 meters downstream, the health of Shelley Creek, its flows, water quality, and fish populations are important to the health of the estuary and the watershed. That's Shelley Creek today.